Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the idea of quartiles, and as you will see, the idea is very simple. Given a set of values, first we order them in increasing order, from the smallest to the largest, and we want to separate, split up our set of values into four quarters, each one containing, of course, 25% of our data. So, imagine that we have the following. So we have our lower quarter, then the second, then the third, and the fourth quarter. From the minimum to the maximum value, well, how do we construct these quarters? Well, the first step is to find the so-called second quartile, Q2, and that is, of course, the median of the set, right? We have two quarters here, that's 50% of all values. 50%, this is the middle value, so Q2 is your median. Your second quartile is the median. Of the entire set of values. And then if you think of it, well, to find what we'll call the first quartile, giving you the bottom 25% of values, ignore the lower 50% of values, and if you split this in two, then you get the first quartile. So take the median of the lower 50% of values, and this will give you the first quartile, which will denote by Q1. To obtain your third quartile, well, it's the exact same idea, right? Ignore now the lower 50% of values, and you're left with the larger 50% of values. Take the middle value, so split this into two, so take the median of this set, and you'll have the third quartile, which is denoted by Q3. And that's it, those are your quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3. Q2 is the median of the entire set, Q1 is the median of the lower 50% of values, Q3 is the median of the larger 50% of values. There's a simple definition that's IQR called the interquartile range. So I for inter, Q for quartile, and R for range. Well, the name gives it away. It is the range between our quartiles, so it is the larger quartile, Q3, minus the smaller quartile, Q1. And that's it. Now, let's consider two examples because there may be a subtlety depending on if you have an odd or an even number of values. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So here's the first example. Suppose we have gathered the following values. So 9.73, 10.07, 10 10.95, 12 12.34, 15, 16.05, 16.40, 18.99, and 19.25. So each value could be, say, the uh, price of a meal at a fairly cheap restaurant. Well, how many values do we have? And now we want to find our three quartiles, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values. So here there is a median that is an element of our set, right? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the middle value is $15, and that is Q2, our second quartile, the median of the entire set. Now when you consider the lower 50% the lower of values to find the first quartile, as Q2 is an element of our set, we include it. So now we have one, two, three, four, five values, an odd number, and so the middle value is this one, 10.95, and this is our first quartile, Q1. 
And again, for the third quartile, we do the same thing. As Q2 is an element of our set, we still consider it. And we have now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. The middle value is 16.40. And this is our third and final quartile. So here's Q1, Q2, and Q3. Each one is an element of the original set of values. And if we want, we can compute also the interquartile range, in this case, being Q3 minus Q1, Q3, 16.40, minus Q1, 10.95, and if you compute this, you'll find 5.45. And that is the interquartile range for this set of values. Let's look now one more example where we have a set with an even number of values and see that things will be a little different. So here's our set now. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 values. And we have an even number of values. Okay, so they're here. We always find the second quartile first as it is the median of the entire set of values. There is no middle value here. We have the lower six values and the upper six values. Well, we know that the median in this case is the average of the two middle values, well, so 2 plus 5 is 7 over 2 is 3.5. So here, the second quartile is 3.5. And I may wonder, in the first case, when we considered the median of the lower 50% of values, we did include Q2, as Q2 was an element of our set. In this case, as Q2 is not an element of our set, we ignore it when we find Q1. So you're left with six values as the lower 50% of values. Once again, there is no middle value. So we use the average of the two middle values. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. So here's Q1 is 0 0.5. And the same goes for the upper 50% of values. Again, Q2 is not a member of our set. So we ignore it, which gives us six values. So we take the middle two values, 7 and 9, we find their average, 7 plus 9 is 16, over 2 is 8. So our third quartile is equal to 8. And that's the difference. If the second quartile, the median of your set, is an element of the set, you include it when you calculate Q1 and Q3. If the median, your second quartile, is not a member of the set, then you ignore it when computing Q1 and Q3. And that's it. In this case, the interquartile range, again Q3 minus Q1, is 8 minus 0 0.5, which is obviously here 7.5. And that's it. Now you can use the idea of quartiles and the minimum and the maximum value to Again, try and represent graphically your set of data values using what's called a box and whisker plot. Let me just specify here that our minimum value is 0 and our maximum value is 15. So let's see in this case what would happen if we try to construct with this data a so-called box and whisker plot. And it will be clear, once we produce it, why we use the word box and whisker. Now assume, just for argument, that these were in dollars. So we have an axis for our values in dollars. And 
we start with introducing the so-called box part of our plot. Now my axis will not be to scale. Now in real life you might want to use Excel so you have an accurate scale here. And here I'll be a little sloppy. So we start with our three quartiles. So Q1, 0 0.5. Q2, 1. Our second quartile, the median, 3.5. And our third and final quartile, 8. Clearly, again, I am not up to scale. And with the first three quartiles, so quartile 1, 2, and 3, we form the so-called box part of our plot. And so in this box, we know that our contained 25% of all values, so between 0.5 and 3.5. In this box, between 3.5 and 8 are also contained 20% of all, 25%, sorry, a quarter of all values. Well, we need also to have an axis for the larger 25% and the lower 25% of values. And of course, we include the minimum and the maximum, and those will form the whisker of our plot. The maximum value is 15, again clearly not up to scale. This is 15, so now you have your so-called whisker. So from 8 to 15 again, R contained 25% of the values of our set, and we include the minimum as our second whisker. The minimum value is 0, and you construct the second whisker. And that's it. This is a box and whisker plot. So you go from the minimum to the maximum, introducing the first quartile, second quartile, and third quartile. And from this, you can get a feeling for the spread of the data values and thinking of the first segment contains the lower 25% of values. The last segment contains the larger 25% of values, and the other two parts of the boxes also contain each one 25% of all data values. So a quarter of our values are between 0 and 0.5, a quarter are between 0.5 and 3.5, a quarter are between 3.5 and 8, and a quarter are between 8 and 15. And that is the idea of a box and whisker plot. Once you have your three quartiles, the minimum and the maximum value of your data set. And that's it.